Hi, welcome to Elder Scrolls Online. In this video, I will answer most of your questions. Use the chapters to find what you need. I'll start from the beginning. Here's the purchase guide that explains what chapters, DLCs, different editions and subscription is. Isho takes 125GB to install and then shrinks to about 100GB, so make room accordingly. The progress bar is purely decorative, so stop watching it and go do something productive for a couple of hours. Unless you play with an adaptive controller and or use screen narration, no, you don't need accessibility mode, otherwise it will cause you a ton of issues like all the people in this video. There is no voice chat on PC version of ESO, so don't be misled. If you use a keyboard and UI looks like this, you turn on accessibility mode. Press back, then options, then scroll to accessibility to turn it off. All races are good, but if you must know, on the screen is a ranking for PvE. Races are not tied to classes. Each race belongs to an alliance, and alliance only matters if you want to play serial PvP with your friends. There are no restrictions for alliances outside of that. Watch the showcase of class skills and their ranking in current meta. Dragonite has amazing damage mitigation, strong damage and good self-healing. Sorcerer has access to pets and strong single target damage. Nightblade offers a lot of burst damage, native invisibility skill and strong healing. Templar offers a lot of AoE damage and healing. Warden has strong healing and mitigation. Necromancer has also a lot of mitigation, healing and group utility. Arcanist offers easy access to a lot of damage and strong defensive kit. Pick up all weapons and armor. None of it is good, but you can use the skill lines that come with them. Equip every weapon and kill an enemy with it to unlock the weapon's skill line. You can also search containers. A lot of them contain recipes for food and crafting materials. The combat tutorial will show you basic actions but no skills yet. Blocking, breaking free and interrupting will be important for fighting, so take note of those. You can interact with each portal to get a short overview of its story, but you are not locked into that area. A portal only places you in a zone. You can travel freely right after. Use this guide if you want to complete quests in chronological order. Otherwise, pick whatever seems cooler. You will not lose anything but some continuity. Put attribute points in the resource you use the most, so either magicka or stamina. Mixing attributes is not recommended because it will decrease your damage and healing. Use all of your class and weapon skills, and you can choose later which ones to keep. Skills level when they are slotted on your ability bar, but you do not need to use them. When a skill is fully leveled, it splits into two morphs that enhance it. Always morph your skills when you can, you can change the morphs later. There are enough skill points to unlock everything in the game. You get them from quests, sky shards, leveling and PvP ranks, so grab those sky shards. Skills are the most important part of ESO's combat system and should be used together with light attacks, something called weaving. Here is how weaving works. Grab all armor weights and put them on. You will unlock three new skill lines and it's handy for any playstyle. For leveling, your armor weight doesn't matter much, so wear a mix of all three weights. 
Questing is the best way to experience early game. Diamond icon signifies story quests and simple icon is for side quests. If you can't find the next quest, open your map and then zone guide to locate it. Using the overhead compass is important, it will show nearby quests and destinations. Also sky shards, do not miss those. Let's address the junk in your bags. The construct gear you're not intending to wear. We'll cover that in the crafting section. Pieces marked as ornate should be sold to any NPC merchant, as well as items marked as treasure, trash or monster trophy. Consume recipes that you find, they will help you with crafting later. Destroy poisons, even the crown ones. Keep potions, soul gems, higher quality foods to use in your exploration. Repair kits are handy on the road and any merchant will repair your gear for a little coin. Soul gems are used to revive yourself and others and recharge weapons. Keep experience scrolls for when you need to level faster, but don't worry about wasting them as you will get plenty for free via daily rewards. There is no difference between crown consumables and normal ones. Crown only refers to their origin and does not make them better or unique. Crafting materials go in your inventory if you don't have ESO+. Plus. You can destroy all of the white quality ones because they are cheap. Your inventory has several tabs so you can filter through items easily. Quest items have their own tab. Place consumables on the quick slot menu to access them via queue, like potions and foods. You can buy more backspace for gold. Look for an NPC called the Pack Merchant. The cost ramps up, but you'll be able to afford it later. You also have a bank. It is account-wide and you can access it in any city. Bank can store almost all items and currencies. There are also storage chests for your house. They are harder to get, but in time you will have them too. Way shrines are an easy way to move around Tamriel. Interacting with a way shrine opens your map, and from there you can click another way shrine to travel there for free. Recalling to a way shrine from a random place costs a little gold. You can also teleport to friends, guildmates, and groupmates for free. Let us take a peek in the crown store. Are there any powerful or must have items? No, it is mostly cosmetics. Some of these tabs will appear useful, but don't be fooled. All of these are actually free in game or are just useless. There are also crown crates, ESO's version of gambling. I cannot show you them because there are loot boxes and I live in Belgium. The game gives you 500 crowns to start off with, but there is nothing useful to buy with that amount, so just let them be. We only need a couple of items from here, the room to spare quest and the armory. Both of them are free. Can you get free crowns? No, but you can trade crown items for gold with other players. Artea explains crown trading. You can buy crown crate items by completing certain daily tasks and earning seals of endeavor. Crown crate duplicates and consumables are recycled into gems. They have the same purpose as seals. A key element to earning gold is using guild traders. You don't need to be in a guild to buy from them. Just interact with one, search for the item you want or pick a category, and press R to search, otherwise the window will appear empty. You can only buy the amount the seller put out, you cannot split the stack. The purchase will arrive to your in-game mail. Different sellers will set different prices, so use these two websites to search for a good price. To sell in guild stores, you need to be in a guild that has a trader. Use the guild finder and read descriptions carefully to find a guild that has a trader but accepts beginners. If you want to know more about earning gold, check out these guides by Artea. Most crafts level by the constructing items. Always deconstruct gear you don't need, especially gear with an intricate trait. Some items have a magnifying glass icon, that means you can research their trait. Traits enhance an individual piece of gear in different ways, and researching them allows you to craft new gear in that trait. Researching every trait on every piece takes months, but it's really easy. Just put a piece up for research and it's done. You can upgrade the quality of gear, but not its level. It's best to upgrade gear when you have the relevant passives. It will save you some materials. Crafting your own gear is not beneficial unless you have max level in crafting and relevant passives. It does not give much XP and mainly wastes your materials. At higher levels, crafting gear sets becomes useful, as some crafted sets are quite good. Item sets are bonuses that you get when combining gear pieces with the same set name, but at low levels you usually outlevel your armor too quickly for sets to be relevant, so this only becomes important after 160 champion points. Level in alchemy and provisioning works by crafting food and potions. You can do it really quickly, provided you have the materials. Craft a bunch of cheap food until you are level 10 in provisioning. Upgrade the provisioning passive, grab a higher level recipe and repeat. Alchemy works the same way. To get materials, gather them in the world or buy from players via guild traders. 
ASO Plus is very handy for crafting, because you don't need to worry about materials clogging up your inventory. There is a free ESO Plus trial sometimes, so use that to your advantage if you don't want to pay for the sub. ESO has a free and robust fashion system. An outfit overrides your character's actual gear without affecting it. To create an outfit, you combine armor and weapon styles and then dye them. Styles describe the visual look of gear and exist as pages or books. They can drop in the world randomly, but it's best to just buy them from guild traders, as most of them are cheap. Dice are awarded for various achievements and have unlimited use. At this point, you probably wish the game was harder. Don't worry, it will be. Until level 50, your stats are inflated via something called battle scaling. Because the world does not scale, you do. In this clip, my level 6 character is almost able to kill a group boss, but I get distracted and die. This is how strong battle scaling is. But it wears off as you level up, and at level 50 it's gone completely. Now you will rely on your gear and skills to defeat enemies, and you will get access to champion points. They are like levels, but they don't give you skill points anymore, and you will gain them faster. Use champion points to get perks for your character, like damage, healing, mitigation and utility. Champion points are account-wide, and you can assign them independently on each character. If you want to be good at combat, you need to get a build. However, builds are temporary until you reach the gear cap, which is at 160 champion points. You can use whatever you like until then. Once you are at gear cap, you can start looking at builds. You can see the trusted sources on screen. There are many good gear sets. Some of them can be crafted, some come from dungeons or raids, and some drop in overland. Do not worry about losing gear sets. If you equip, destroy or deconstruct a set item, you get saved in your collections. Later on, you will be able to reconstruct this piece using a transmutation station. Also, the game curates your loot drops based on your collection and will give you pieces you didn't collect yet. Mechanical skill is also important. We discussed weaving earlier and also you will use two bars instead of one. Second bar will unlock at level 15. At level 10, Activity Finder unlocks, and you can do daily random dungeon and daily battleground for a lot of experience. Also, explore and kill enemies. Should you grind? No, grinding is not beneficial for a new player, because it only provides XP and no skill points, which are more important at this stage, and it burns you out very quickly. Most importantly, there isn't anything that can ruin your character, so don't worry about doing it right the first time. Having a lot of skill options is great, so enroll in all available game guilds. Go to your alliance starter city and find the mages and fighters guild branches. You can join both of these guilds immediately. At level 10, join the Undaunted. Find them in a tavern in one of these locations. If you have Somerset DLC, the Sigix can be a useful skill branch, but it's quite situational and takes a while to level for the first time. There are also Dark Brotherhood and Thieves Guild skill lines, part of respective DLCs. Those don't give any combat advantages, so enroll if you like the roleplay. Speaking of crime, if you are escaping the law, find an outlaw refuge in any major city, and there you can sell or launder any stolen items, and also pay off your fine. Fines expire after a while, so you can just avoid the guards until it's gone. Some skill lines level differently from others. Class and weapon skill lines level when you have their respective skills slotted on your bar, but others will have a different condition. For example, Mage's Guild skill line levels by picking up these blue glowing books scattered around the world. You can see the leveling condition by hovering over a skill line's progress bar. If you have ASO Plus or don't mind the inventory game, get into daily crafting writs. They provide XP, valuable materials and recipes. Crafting dailies become available at level 6. To pick them up, grab a quest from a message board next to any city crafting area and follow the quest marker until you find Milinif and Daniel Toleno. They will certify you for crafting risk by teaching you how to create and dismantle gear and gather materials. You can also skip this tutorial if you get the relevant crafting profession to level 10. For jewelry dailies, travel to Alenor in Somerset and talk to this purple gentleman. Now the crafting quest boards will have a blue marker over them, which stands for a repeatable quest. Another thing is to get your mount speed up. Train at the stables daily. There you can also increase back capacity and mount sprint stamina. But mounts are painfully slow when starting out, so let's fix that. At level 10, you gain access to the open PvP areas, Cyrodiil and Imperial City. Tap L or use the menus to go into Alliance War tab. Choose any, but preferably low level Cyrodiil campaign and enter it. You should get an invitation prompt quickly, and then you'll teleport to Cyrodiil, find an NPC that offers training, and be vigilant not to skip it, otherwise your journey to a fast mount will include a fair amount of PvP. 
you will be directed to use the Transitor Shrine, which is a special way to travel inside Cyrodiil. Teleport to your other home base, speak to some more NPCs and teleport back. Off to the shooting range now. Do not worry about PvP, you are in a sanctuary zone. Listen to the instructions and shoot some dummies with siege machines. Then use your quick slot menu to repair one. After some more talking, you will go to the scroll temple. Introduce yourself to the Elder Scroll, grab the Sky Shard nearby and scoot back to your home base. Complete the final round of talking and you will now have Alliance Wars skill line level 3, which unlocks the continuous attack passive. Purchase it, mount up and feel that 30% speed increase. We're almost set, now let's unlock infinite respects. In the crown store section, we grab the room to spare quest and the armory, all for free. Read the quest scroll in your inventory, follow the marker and speak to the innkeeper for a free room. This is your first house and we'll use it for the armory. Head inside, press F5 to open the housing editor, find the armory and place it so it lights up in green. Tap F5 again and now you are ready to reset your build. The armory can save skills, gear, attributes and more, but it can also reset them if you equip the default empty build. It's free and unlimited, and you can even save Vampire and Werewolf curses there. As a new player, skill points are arguably more important to you than raw XP. Luckily, group dungeons give you both, and a bunch of other useful things as well. At level 10, you can join the dungeon queue, which will automatically match you with three other players and teleport you to a dungeon, a random or specific one depending on your choice. There are three difficulty modes, Normal, Veteran and Veteran Hard mode. Base game dungeons are easier than DLC ones in all modes, until level 50, you can only queue for normal dungeons. The higher level you are, the more dungeons will be unlocked. The first random normal dungeon of the day gives you a huge chunk of experience, so make use of that. However, the queue times may be daunting for damage dealers, as there are far more of them than tanks and healers. The solution is to be a tank or healer. Healing is pretty straightforward. Grab a restoration staff and place some of its skills on your bars. Add some class heals and you're good to go. Tank queues are even faster, but fake tanking requires you to slot a taunt to draw the attention of the boss. Get a sword and shield and equip its first skill, Puncture. Reapply this skill every 10 seconds or so to the boss and don't forget to block and heal yourself. As long as you live and keep the boss on you, your role for normal dungeons is fulfilled. Apart from questing, exploring, fashion and housing, there are harder activities to engage in, like solo arenas, 4-man arenas, 4-man dungeons, 12-man raids and open-world PvP. Each of these activities offers skill points, titles, cosmetics and collectibles. Rest assured, there is enough content for everyone. Jumping to people's houses Player housing is a vast and well-developed system in ESO, and houses can be used for many things – crafting, training, setting skills and more. If you are in a guild, it likely has a house with a lot of amenities, but you can also travel to houses of players you have no ties with. Just input the script in your in-game chat and it will start a teleportation to the player you mentioned. In this case, I am using Elias as an example. And you can too. His house on both PC servers is a practical heaven. It is not rude to use someone's house and you are not spending any of the owner's resources, so feel free to jump around. Help tab contains a lot of information about the game's systems. And in general, it is pretty reliable. I can also recommend Alcast HQ for fantastic player-made guides. ASOS UI may seem a bit lacking in places, but this can be easily fixed without external tweaks. Let's go over some useful changes, all of them will be in settings menu. Firstly, the ground OEs can be set to be a lot brighter than originally, and they can be in any color too. Head into gameplay, combat section, enable custom colors and crank up both sliders. You can also change the color of the ground OE. In the same section is a useful toggle, prevent attacking innocents. Turn it on to prevent unnecessary run-ins with the guard. Set quick ground cast to on if you don't want to double tap the targeting of your ground abilities. In interface, you can turn on automatic quest tracking. It will switch the latest quest you picked up as your active one. This is an optional setting. In camera section, you can customize screen shake and also increase field of view for first and third person. In combat section, switch ability bars to always show. Turn on ability timers and ability back row. Switch attribute bars to always show. Switch resource numbers to number and percent, and toggle on ultimate number. Moving on to controls, bind roll dodge to a more convenient button. I use T. It's advisable to bind interrupt and break free to the same button that's easy to reach. I use my mouse wheel click. Weapon swap is needed to switch between bars when you unlock the second one, and you need it very often, so binding it on a mouse side button is a good idea. What are companions? It's a system similar to Skyrim's followers, only a bit more fleshed out. 
you can build your companion in different ways to help you in combat, although they are not very good at it, so it's best to use them as tanks or healers. There are 6 companions in total, 2 in Blackwood, 2 in High Isle and 2 in Necrom. Their skills are mimicking player classes, but essentially they are skins of the same thing, so you should choose a companion based on their personality and not combat ability. You can read more about companions and their builds here. Addons are available on PC only and offer a tremendous variety of features, from real-time damage tracking to housing system overhaul. Addons are free and improve the quality of life so much that ESO on PC is practically a different game. However, they cannot offer advantage in PvP, alter the game's core functions or affect other players. Thus, addons are not cheating and whoever claims otherwise is suffering from severe skill issue. Please be mindful of their condition. Here are some examples of useful addons. Map pins fills out the map and allows you to see locations of chests, treasure maps, world events and more. Beam me up streamlines teleportation, making discovering new zones easy, and it even has an automatic mode. Lazy Rit Creator does your crafting dailies for you, a massive time saver for a chore like that. Wizard's Wardrobe is a lightweight version of the Armory, allowing you to switch gear and skills in one click. Extremely useful for swapping between solo and group setups, and a must in trials. In short, if you can think it, there is an add-on for it. Here you can see the list of useful add-ons that are non-intrusive but extremely helpful. Installing add-ons is straightforward. Go to MMOUI website, download Minion software, install it and point it to your add-on folder. It is always located in your Documents folder. You may need to restart Minion or your PC if it doesn't immediately work. Now you can manage add-ons easily. Simply search for them in the Find More tab and install. For add-ons to take effect, type slash reload UI in in-game chat. Then navigate to Settings, Add-ons and see if the add-ons are marked in red, as that means they are missing library files. Open the little drop-down button to check which libraries an add-on needs, and then install them from Minion the same way as add-ons themselves. Some add-ons need to have a keybind assigned to use them, others have no settings at all. Add-ons don't need to be updated too often, and most will appear as out of date. That's completely normal. Here are solutions to the most common ASO issues. Google your problem first, and if you exhausted your options, you can ask other players on ESO Discord servers such as ESO University. Failing that, contact customer support from the in-game help tab or via ESO official website.